Good to go? Adonai tzifatai tiftach, ufi yagid techilatecha. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Adonai tzifatai tiftach, ufi yagid techilatecha. Adonai. Tzifatai tiftah, ufi yagi tehilatecha. Adonai, tzifatai tiftah, ufi yagi tehilatecha. Adonai, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a Hebrew, you can sing the English. If you don't know English, you can sing this. Welcome. Uh, welcome on behalf of the Isaiah 1 class this semester. Uh, when we talked about things that we might do in a chapel based on Isaiah 1, uh, kind of an interfaith meditation, if you will, on, uh, on this text, uh, Josephine pointed out that in her experience, the openings of Christian services and the openings of Jewish services had a number of similarities. Uh, and obviously this varies depending on which Christian service and which Jewish service you're talking about. But uh, at Central Reform Congregation, as Nicole had experienced, uh, they use Sanctuary, a well-known Christian song, I believe, yes, um, and to, to the Hebrew words, Adonai Tzifatai Tiftach, that we, just, that we just sang. So I thought that would be uh, a good way to open it. As I said, this is in the nature of an interfaith meditation on Isaiah 1. Uh, why Isaiah? Because the class is in Isaiah. Why Isaiah 1? Good a place to start as any. It's the beginning of the book, but there's a particular reason. Uh, I was delighted to learn uh, that Laurel was doing a class on Lamentations that has their chapel tomorrow. Okay. Well, both Isaiah 1 and the Book of Lamentations have a specific place in the Jewish calendar, and they're very related. Lamentations is read on a holiday known as Tisha B'Av, which commemorates the destruction of the temple. I assume you'll hear about that tomorrow. Right before 
right, the, the, the Shabbos before, what we read in the synagogue is this text, Isaiah 1. It's called Shabbat Chazon, Shabbos of Vision, because in the very beginning it talks about the vision that appeared to Isaiah. But as you'll see, it's much more than a vision. It's, it's challenging, it's images, it's calling to account, it's offering, uh, in some ways, uh, a, a, a glimmer of hope down the road. And of course, the end of the book of Isaiah, which we read after Tisha B'Av in the synagogue, offers a lot of hope, and that's what we're moving into uh, in the class. But today, it's a little more somber. Today, we're getting ready to, we're, we're preparing, as it were, to hear, uh, to hear the book of Lamentations, so tune in tomorrow for that. Um, so we're going to break Isaiah up into a number of, Isaiah 1 up into a number of different sections and uh, we, we figured out how to do this well in advance, like 10 minutes ago, maybe 12. <laughs> so if there's a little bit of stage directions going on, you'll understand. Um, but right now I'd like to turn things over to Nicole Herda. Good morning. Good morning. Our class has been studying the book of Isaiah, realizing that it is written by multiple authors over a length of time. Part of our studies have included learning about Targum, which are ancient explanations of Hebrew scriptures for Jews who no longer understand Hebrew. In other words, someone would read the text in Hebrew, and then another rabbi would translate at the same time expand or explain the text for the congregation in ways they can understand. Before coming to seminary, I was a high school youth group leader who did Bible study with youth who grew up in the church, as well as those who had never read the Bible, much less come to a service. When one of our assignments was to do a Targum on Isaiah chapter one, verses two and three, I thought of how I would translate it so that all of my high school youth would understand what Isaiah was saying to the people of Israel. The invitation to pay attention rather than hear or listen was an important recognizing that paying attention is a call to action for the people of Israel. Listen, my Targum on Isaiah chapter one, verses two and three. Pay attention, all those in the heavens. Pay attention, all those on earth. God has spoken. I have fed, cared for, and raised children but they ignore and rebel against me. The ox which plow the land know their farmer, and even stubborn donkeys know where their barn is. Yet my people did not pay attention. They didn't even notice. The chapter continues with this vision, which I will read, and then Angela will sign just by itself, without any reading, and then we'll, re then we'll read and sign together. I want you to watch the, really get something out of the, uh, the, the, the physical representation uh, in Angela's signing. But I'll read it first so you have some idea what to, what to look for. Woe, sinful nation, people weighed down with crime, seed of evildoers, sons acting ruinously. They have forsaken the Lord, scorned Israel's Holy One. They have fallen behind. Why do you seek further beatings that you continue to rebel? Every head is sick and every heart in pain. From foot sole to head, no spot is sound wound, bruise, and open sore, not drained, not bandaged, not softened with oil. Your land is desolate. Your towns are burned in fire. Your soil before your eyes, strangers devour it. Desolation like an upheaval by strangers. And the daughter of Zion remains like a hut in a vineyard, like a shed in a field, like a besieged city. 
Had not the Lord of armies left us a scant remnant, we would be like Sodom. We would resemble Gomorrah. If you could show Angela again while I read, she's going to sign just what she just did. But I'll be reading the text now along with her. Woe, sinful nation, people weighed down with crime, seed of evildoers, Sons acting ruinously. They have forsaken the Lord. Scorned Israel's Holy One. They have fallen behind. Why do you seek further beatings? that you continue to rebel. Every head is sick and every heart in pain. From foot sole to head, no spot is sound. Wound, bruise, and open sore, not drained, not bandaged, not softened with oil. Your land is desolate. Your towns are burned in fire. Your soil before your eyes, strangers devour it. Desolation like an upheaval by strangers. And the daughter of Zion remains. like a hut in a vineyard, like a shed in a field, like a besieged city. Had not the Lord of armies left us a scant remnant, we would be like Sodom, 
we would resemble Gomorrah. And as if triggered by a key word, this next little section of Isaiah 1 picks up that theme of Sodom and Gomorrah, but in a very different way. Just give me one minute. Okay, I've got what I need. Okay, so Ash, you're reading this, yes? Hit it. This is the word of the Lord. O leader of the Lord. Give ears to God's teaching, O people of Gomorrah. Why need I all your sacrifices, says the Lord? I am sated with burnt offerings of rams, and the suets of fatted beasts, and the blood of bulls and sheep and he goats. I do not desire. You come to see my face. Who asked this of you to trample my courts? You shall no longer bring false grain offering. It is incense of abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath call an assembly. I cannot bear crime and convocation. Your new moons, your appointed times, I utterly despise. They have become a burden to me. I cannot bear them. When you spread your palms, I avert my eyes from you. Though you will abundantly pray, I do not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash, become pure. Remove your evil acts from my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Make the oppressed happy. Defend the orphan, argue the widow's case. Here's another Targum. God says, okay, let us come to terms. Let us reach an understanding. Let us settle out of court. If your offenses be red as dyed cloth, they shall become pure wool, but you have to listen. Open to me, an opening as wide as the eye of a needle, and I will open to you. If you are listening, if you are open, the land's bounty you shall eat. But if you refuse and rebel, by the sword you shall be eaten. Shall I come before the Lord and bow before God on high? What should I give as offering? Will Hashem be pleased with the fat of rams or rivers of flowing oil? What substance or savor should I bring? God has shown humankind what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and love of mercy walk humbly with your God.
shall I come before the Lord, bow before God on high? What should I give as offering? Will God be pleased with the fat of rams or rivers of flowing oil? What substance or savor should I bring? God has shown humankind what is good. What does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and love mercy, walk humbly with thy God. But to do justly and love mercy, be ready to walk with God. Usually you see walk humbly with your God is the translation there, and it may very well be right, but uh, uh, there was another lexicon, and I think it was Holiday, Clint, that little, little one, um, which had be ready to walk with God as a translation there, and I love that. Um, also want to mention that that was, uh, my, my father was not a particularly religious man, but he loved to quote that verse. <laughs> um, the last section of... Uh, of the book of Isaiah is one that particular, uh, not of the book of Isaiah, of this chapter that we read on Shabbat Chazon, big difference. The last section of this chapter that we read on Shabbat Chazon uh, starts with the same word as the book of Lamentations, Echa, how, it's this lamenting kind of word. Um, and uh, so Josephine is going to read this text and then uh, Ash, is going to read a poem inspired by this text that he wrote. The reading, Isaiah 1, 21 to 27. How has the faithful town become a whore? Filled with justice, where righteousness did lodge, and now murderers, your silver has turned to dross. Your, your drink is mixed with water. Your nobles are nerves and companions to thieves. All of them lust for bribes and chase illicit payment. They do not defend the orphan and the widow's case does not touch them. Therefore, says the master, Lord of armies, Israel's mighty one. Oh, I will settle scores with my foes and take vengeance of my enemies. And bring And, and bring my hands back upon you and take away all your dross and bring back your judges as before and your counselors as long ago. Then shall you be called town of righteousness, faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed through justice and those who turn back in her through righteousness. Okay, um, here's a poem I wrote on that portion in particular. <clears throat> the prophet screams, but the city doesn't answer. Every gift is a bribe, and wine becomes filthy water. The prophet screams, 
and begs God for a falling angel to anoint his country with a drop of justice from heaven to quench the desolate silence. Then, like a heartbeat, a pulse beneath his own, God's cry joins his in an ear-splitting guttural choir of heavenly hosts, breathes life into the city's cracked lips, reignites the sun with an outpouring of molten lightning. The prophet stares at his hands, veins below the skin, pulsing with the voice of his God. And their every pleading gesture for justice and maybe a little love becomes the convulsion of humanity in the streets. The city is loud. The city sings. And his tears are those of joy. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. I want to conclude with a song. It's a piyut. Piyut is another way that the synagogue interacted with the text, in addition to Targum, which we've seen, in addition to Sermon, which I didn't think I had to give an example of that. You all are quite familiar. Um, but then there's also the piyut, um, which is a poem. It's the same, you can hear the word poet, piyut. Um, a poem based on the particular reading from the prophets for that Shabbos. Um, I didn't find one for Isaiah 1, but I found one for Isaiah 64. Um, it's the last screen, if you want to put it up. I won't be able to sing it, the word, sing the words anyway, because I was not able to print the words. Um, but I think I'm just going to sing the melody, and you can read the words. And that will be our farewell. That will be our benediction. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us.
Aglau bisman karif no marame Send us soon healing of the spirit, complete healing, healing of the spirit, healing of the body, and let us say Amen. Thank you.